Welcome back. Day two, marathon two completed by Kevin Sinfield on his seven in seven challenge. And we'll be delighted to be able to, to talk to Kevin in a bit. And um, we're especially pleased that uh, Rob Burrow is, is listening and joining us and, and keep up to date on everything that's being done, uh, both in his name and for the MND Association uh, with Kev's great fundraising efforts. We're delighted today to be joined uh, by Jen Dodd, once again, from the MND Association. Uh, here, here in uh, Yorkshire and uh, in Humberside in the North East. Uh, we've also got John Pike, uh, who's from the Yorkshire Dales branch of MND Association, uh, and Jonathan, who uh, uh, you may have seen on the recent BBC documentary uh, with Rob Burrow and his dad, Jeff, um, someone else who's, who's been touched by MND um, and uh, can share his experiences um, and, and how that's going. So we'll start off with Kev and uh, Kev talk us through uh, Marathon 2. It was a wet one over in uh, Oldham when Barry said yesterday about uh, God's garden always having uh, having having the water. He, he wasn't wrong. No, I wasn't wrong. Um, well, no, no complaints. It was wet, it was miserable, uh, it was great. In fact, it's exactly that now. And it's, it was a typical day in Oldham. If I'm honest, we got really lucky yesterday with uh, not with the frost, but we did have a couple of hours of sunshine. So um, yeah, it went well. Um, like I said, no complaints. We did a different route today. We headed out towards um, the centre of town, and then took a big right turn towards Shaw um, and Milnrow. So for those of you who know the M62 to Shaw and Milnrow turn off, we were under the motorway bridge for a couple of k's and then turned around and came back and did a bit of a loop round Oldham before we came back to Saddleworth. So, um, different route, um, but all good, all good. No complaints. Great stuff. Uh, you said yesterday there, there weren't any dark moments, any today? No, no, I, I think um, I expected it today, given um, when I'd done my training day two were horrendous and really, really tough. And... Um, you know, just just physically and but but probably more so mentally, really challenged me today. Was I think the fact we're in a team. Do you know? I think I think the fact we've got some people who understand when you're a little bit down and they come and have a chat with you and they pick you up and they know what to say to you. And um, but no, no dark days yet, no dark moments yet. But we've got five days to go, aren't we? So um, I'm still smiling and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Was it tough on your feet, the, the wet? Because presumably your, your trainers were, were sodden by at, at least an hour in. Yeah. Um, no, do you, do you know what it was? The last two days, I've needed a wee. So yesterday, after 3K, I needed a wee. And uh, managed to hold it in the whole whole run. Uh, probably same today, but it wasn't until we hit about halfway. Um, I have requested from the team that we get some catheters. So I can slide them up my shorts and um, take care of business, but <laughs> but, um, but but they uh, they haven't materialised yet. So we'll have to see. But um, yeah, that that's the only bit at the minute. Just trying to stop myself going to, going to the toilet. And you said yesterday you were a bit annoyed at yourself that you, you, you did uh, three hours forty, a bit too quick. You thought for marathon one. So just to prove that point, you went two minutes faster today. Yeah, um, yeah. We, I've, I won't say we got it wrong today because I do have a plan of how I'm going to attack it. So um, try and get up quick for that first hour, and then before the stuff uh, the shuffle starts, um, you know, try and pull back a little bit and and get have some time in the bank. Um, that will still be the plan for the for the remaining five. You know, still go out and try and attack that first hour, and then and then pull back and and hopefully have some time in the bank. But but we'll see. Um, I have no doubt we're going to slow. And, uh, you know, the saying has been used a number of times to me. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon curve, but actually it's not. It's not a marathon, it's seven marathons. So we've got to be real smart in how, how we go about them. And probably at the minute, um, we have been really disciplined, but we probably need to be a little bit more disciplined. And 350 would be ideal, I think. And then tomorrow, tomorrow's run, what's, what, what's that got in store for you? Yeah, so I, I think I've just sent on the WhatsApp group there we're deliberating uh, which route to do. Um, I think route one, um, which took in most of the villages locally, 
and I know the Christmas decorations, um, early doors while it was dark, was particularly uh, high in everybody's list. So I'm hoping we're going to pick Route 1. Uh, today we're pretty flat, no complaints. So day one's a little bit more hilly, but probably the scene was a little bit better. And um, so the, we, the, we've had a team that have put together some wonderful routes, but actually Route 1, I know it like the back of my hand. I know, I, I know from whichever point I am, sort of at the villages, how many kilometres are I, I am away from home? And I just think that's so comforting. Uh, and obviously there's fantastic awareness and funds being raised. Uh, Jen, we spoke yesterday about uh, the impact this is having on, on the MD, MND Association. Uh, is that continuing? It's definitely continuing. I think it's absolutely incredible to see that total just keep, keep you've smashed your target and it's just keeping on rising and rising. And it must be a great motivation whilst you're running. But I think it's also fantastic for the MND community and the MND association who are watching and joining you virtually to be watching and seeing that as well. So thank you so much. No, don't be daft. Uh, sorry for I, I just I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again. I'm so proud to be wearing your vest. So proud to be wearing your snood. Um, I'm. You know, I'm immensely proud that I've got the number seven on my back for our good mate who's who's on here and and um, you know the combination of the two of you is. Is so so powerful. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and you are setting a bit of a fashion trend with that snood. I've had so many people asking about a snood now. So you're also a trendsetter as well as a marathon runner and a fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that will come as a boost because I uh, I posted a picture of uh, Kev doing a doing a dab on this morning's run, and he suddenly became not a trendsetter in the eyes of his son Jack. So the fact that he's now a trendsetter that, that'll boost you, Kev, will it? Mm, not sure I carry much weight uh, in our house, that I'd say, but I do like the snood. Uh, and Jen, um, you mentioned about the impact of it. Great to have uh, two people from, from the West Yorkshire branches, well, from the Yorkshire branches, joining us on the call today. Um, we've got John Pike, who's the chair of the Yorkshire Dales branch since October 2020. Uh, John, um, you're, uh, you're a lifelong Rhinos fan. Does it give you a great sense of pride to see what's happening? Absolutely, and I, I really want to thank Rob and his family for all that they're doing for the MND Association, and then the Rhinos, the Foundation, Kevin and all Rob's mates from his playing days for all they're doing for Rob and the Association. And to me, it's what Rugby League is all about. And uh, the fact that you see Wigan, for example, uh, having special shirts made, um, auctioning them off, different examples of other players who've done a lot. And it, it just, I think, is representative and typifies what a great community game it is and, and a family game and how everybody pulls together. And um, I think it's, I, I always think it's a bit like in the north, really, that we, we tend to just get on with things and, and not really make a fuss. And, and uh, a lot of people I've spoken to who've seen uh, Rob and Lindsay and family on TV have been really moved by that. It sort of typifies that sort of spirit. Um, but it, it is important that we can reach out to people out there and families who are struggling uh, and might be concerned that they shouldn't make too much of a fuss if they're struggling, for example, with uh, unsuitable accommodation or managing out without pieces of equipment that could make a big difference to their uh, lives that um, they get in touch with us and we will try and help them. And uh, perhaps I could say a little bit about what we do in the Yorkshire Dales branch and, and uh, and of course, in all the other branches, I mean, we're just one of about 80 of them. We cover quite a big area, sort of North Leeds, Otley, Ilkley, up to Settle, across to part of York. And our, our aim is to try and serve everybody in the area who is affected by MND, not only those who got it, but carers and family members and friends. Uh, and we have our own train visitors who can call on regional care as well and other advisors and we liaise with the medical profession uh, including for example Airedale Hospital and St Michael's Hospice in Harrogate 
and also with social care professionals, speech and occupational therapists and so on. And the visitors aim to keep in regular contact with um, everybody. Normally this includes face-to-face -face visits as well as email and, and phone, which is obviously hard at the moment. And, and very often it's just about having a friendly chat. Um, we try and provide emotional support and accurate information for people so that they can um, live their lives more easily and make properly informed decisions about what they want to do and where they want to go. I, I haven't been personally affected by MND, but I've supported it a long time because it's such a cruel illness and you know, we're desperate to find out more about the causes and a cure and, and there's so much to do. And Rob and, and everybody else associated with, with him have done a huge amount to raise awareness and, and uh, that helps us enormously. But we, we always have to remember that every none of the cases are alike. Everybody is different and different people need different things. And we've got to try to respond to that rather than, in a way, tell them what we think is good for them, which doesn't work in Yorkshire either. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, John. I mean, and it's such a, such a comprehensive list of services there that, that the MND Association across the nation do, but, uh, but specifically in your case, in, in North Yorkshire, I mean, it's, I know, I know from Rob when he got his first diagnosis that just having someone to talk about, you know, the basic steps of, of MND and, and, uh, and what, what, what they, what they can do about and what, the, you know, the adjustments need to make to their homes and, and to their lives and everything else. And having just a, someone to talk to can be just a, a huge first step. I think that's absolutely very much what it is. A lot of people, maybe don't want any more than that you know they just they just want somebody to talk to people a lot of people mainly want it's just a friendly voice it's to to be able to sort of have a chat and and get that sort of emotional support and help them to work out for themselves what they want and how they want to live their lives going forward yeah that's fantastic and we've also got Jonathan on. Uh, Jonathan's part of the West Yorkshire branch, and I know you're a massive Rebel Leaf fan. Jonathan, you got your tickets for next year's World Cup already. You're uh, looking ahead to 2021. We'll see the back of 2020. Oh, definitely. You know, get get this horrible year out of the way. Uh, yes, book my tickets to the World Cup next year, including the final. So, looking to have a bit of a tour around some of the stadiums and see which uh, which offer the best facilities. Been to the grand final. At, at uh, Old Trafford, that's fantastic facilities. So yeah, really looking forward to next year. And you've had a personal connection with Rob, uh, but Rob, Rob and his dad Jeff have, have been talking to you as well. We, talk, we, we just mentioned there with with John about the, the how important talking is, and and that's certainly something you guys have been able to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I find that having the support of of my family, like Rob does, you know, you get the support of your family and your friends, and it's a great help and then you've got the support and help from the association and the West Yorkshire branch who regularly keep in contact you know and uh, down in the head office as well I've got people in the fundraising department who give me a ring so I've got a few done a few bits not I can't do as much as Kevin um, don't worry no one could do as much as Kevin <laughs> don't, don't feel, don't feel slighted by that steady on I've not finished it yet <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fantastic job you're doing there and uh, you know it's I just iterate, reiterate everything that everybody said you know it's great help um, raising awareness and the funds and can't thank you enough and you mentioned the awareness there I mean how, how much does it mean to to have MND as part of the, the wider conversation in, in, in the country in terms of people knowing about MND and, and you know being, being aware of it and presumably you know you haven't, you haven't had to explain as much about what MND is people are, are more aware of it now yes um, when you're talking to people about the the MND association and the charity they're not they weren't as aware the, you've got the big the main ones you know the Marie Curies and all that um, 
the M&D Association was just trickling along in the background, if you like. Um, Rob's work and Kevin's work and everybody has brought this this horrific disease to the forefront of everybody's mind. You know, and you can they understand a bit more what you're talking about. And that that's just a lot easier to talk with than having to go through the whole detail of what it's all about. And on the on the rugby side of things, uh, you mentioned you're you're a big fan. Uh, uh, in terms of in terms of your memories of Rob from his from his playing days, any any particular ones stand out for you? Oh, there's there's so many. It's it's back when they, when they did the travel in 2015. You know, you, there's so many memories there. You, I've watched all the programs, and just seeing your dart, your dart in runs, it's it scares people. You could see the other t- the other teams, the forwards, they were just they were just so in fear, and you've inspired so many players. You can see it now in the players that want to be like you. You know, they want to play like you did, and you know they terrify teams almost as much. But yeah, it's been fantastic to see him play, and you know, very proud of you. Great stuff. Uh, we've been joined on the call. We're going to be joined by the Leeds Rhinos commercial director Rob Oates, and Rob's a, a good friend of both Kevin and uh, and Rob. Um, it's fantastic from from the from the board of directors as well, Rob, to, to see what what Kevin's doing for Rob. Um, yeah, just amazing, absolutely amazing what Kev's done and is doing. Um, world record pace by Saturday, stomping around Wheatwood. Um, it'll break three hours at this rate. Um, but but. It's, it's all for Rob and what we think of Rob as a man, a player, um, a friend. Um, he, he's just in his old in such a high regard by everybody connected to the club, you know, board, fans, sponsors, partners, everybody um, loves him. Um, just a, a top, top guy um, with, with this really, really cruel um, chapter of events in his life. So, Rob, we're right with you, mate. It's lovely to see you. Um, and... You know, that, that just just for me personally, he never ever. You know, I saw his first game, I saw his last game, um, missed one of his games in between, which was Hull at home. So I saw every game, and like you know, for him, him as a player, the the, the pressure on him because if Rob played well, invariably we'd win. So the pressure on him for all that length of time, but but away from the games, he never asked for anything, never wanted anything always would do whatever the club asked of him, never questioned anything. And he was just a one club, absolutely perfect um, player and role model um, on and off the field. So, Rob, you're a diamond, matey. Um, we're right with you all the, all, all the way through this. And, um, yeah, we think the world deep on. We really do. Uh, as an aside there, Rob, you, you mentioned that Rob did any, anything uh, the club would ask you. For those who saw the... The Sky documentary, excellent Sky documentary last Friday, where JP told the story about the wind-up on Rob, where he got hold of the player appearance memo sheet and told him he was going to judge a gnome contest over at Harrogate uh, Flower Show. Yeah. Uh, the fact that uh, that he came to JP to complain about it rather than actually say, no, I'm not doing that. That, that was the <laughs> subtext of that. You know, he didn't complain. He just said, I think, I think they've gone too far this time. It says, says it all, really. Absolutely. And, and and like the one thing that people wouldn't say, you know, we were always at the stadium when the games were like kicking off on a Friday night. Always the first there. Always the first there. So I'd either get to my position where I greet everybody or I'd be brain on the window and give him a thumbs up. He's always there with his, his kind of Red Bull, walking in, smiling, happy. And all, always smiling, always first there. Um, and like it, we, we, we used to do uh, on occasions we'd show sponsors around the changing rooms before the game um, and this particular time we were showing Aon Insurance it was like a potential client and like we were in there and Rob was sat there just so unassuming and he couldn't believe how relaxed he was we were playing St Helens in a big game it was Mitch Garbett's debut actually and and they just couldn't get their head around that Rob was there and like chatting to him just dead unassuming as we know he is He's just brilliant, just a, a fantastic ambassador for rugby league, but a, a, a brilliant ambassador for us as a club. You know, the Rhinos, he's, he's Rhinos for life. And, yeah, we can't speak highly enough about him. And uh, you've done a bit of running in your time, Rob. Uh, how impressive is this, what, what Kev's doing? 
Yeah, I said I was going to run the seventh one with him. Well, what I said was I was going to run the last 250 metres and, and, and dip, him <laughs> off, dip him on the line. I'm going to do him on the line in, in the last 250. Having said that, I don't know. I think he might beat me over 250 even then, so I might have to nip it down to maybe 60. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's incredible, isn't it? It's absolutely incredible. Um, when you say I've done a bit of running in my time, nothing like on that scale, um, Kev, absolutely not. So it is, yeah, mind-bogglingly good. It's um, a fantastic effort, but, you know, the piece on BBC Breakfast yesterday said it all, you know, that Rob would do it for Kev and, and the band of brothers that we talk about in the golden generation. It is, and it's deeper than just, it's not superficial. It isn't just, oh, well, I played with him a bit. It's not, it goes far, far, far deeper than that. To, to everyone connected with the club, even now, you know, and, and how we are with each other and, and the team and everybody, it's like it's it's a very, very deep-rooted friendship, which is lovely to see in, in such trying circumstances. And in your role, Rob, as commercial director and heading up our commercial department, you're you're the the point of contact with all our, our partners and, and sponsors, and it's been wonderful to see how they've reacted to, to Rob's cause and to the m and Association in, a, in an incredibly tough year for... for for commercial companies yeah. and everything else. You know, I think about um, the support you know, just just for just for this event, Romero's Insurance, ACS, they put a twenty thousand pounds in, into the pot, Rob's old player sponsor. We've had donations from from Calic Construction separately on the website as well. You know, the, the, the way the sponsors have all got behind it is is wonderful. Absolutely. And and you touched on ACS there, Dave Flannery and Michael Flannery, family run business. Who were, who were very successful, but they're just lovely people. And they sponsored Rob from when he broke onto the scene because um, David's son, Tom, was was five at the time and just absolutely worshipped Rob. And like some of the player appearances in them early days were Rob going to the family home and doing a birthday party for Tom, which was like, and that's how the bond grew. And then they sponsored him throughout his career. So when this this has happened, you know they wanted to obviously like help as as, as much as they could, and then this is obviously a, a way to to do that. And like you said, their generosity just typifies, you know what what's gone on all year. And you know you cast your mind back to the game, and you know that was like the busiest game. You know you know it was it was busier than a World Club Challenge um, game. You know the the Manly and the Melbourne games we've had, and that shows what everyone thinks of Rob. And then we had the dinner when all the celebrities couldn't do enough and get there, never mind all the sponsors. So it's been a wonderful show of support on it, but you won't expect anything anything other for such a hero as, as Rob Burrow. And talking on the rugby side, Rob, uh, what, what would be, obviously, we, the last week ahead of the grand final, we saw that try over and over again. What, did you stand out other memories from, from Rob's career? Do you, know, do you know what I loved about Rob? Like, he just... You know that that little zip, and when he was when and like there's you know, 60, 70 tries where he's just zipped through and and gone. Do you know what I loved about him? His defence. I just loved it. How how he changed, like how how he approached, and he was like he was one of our best defenders. He was absolute on that edge. He was just absolutely outstanding. Um, but just just I loved it. How humble he was. Always looked for his family. Always went to see his family straight away in the long bar after and was just like a genuinely top guy around the game. He was just, just brilliant. And and that trying the grand final, the greatest try ever, for sure, for sure. And and you, like me, Rob, it's such a privilege to not only not only work with these heroes, but be able to call heroes friends as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that, it's lovely. It is lovely. And, like, you know, I've been a season ticket, season ticket holder. I've, I've been going since I was four, and... I'm 50 now and like, you know, it's, it is a privilege to work there. It's a privilege to get to know these people, you know, on and off the field. Um, and and, and I, I mean, I, have, I feel very, very privileged. I'm in a privileged position to call them friends, but they're just lovely. And I said it a lot, you know, the club's a special club, but it's only special because of the people who are, are involved in it. And that's fans, sponsors and partners, but it's players and it's players who have created, you know, the lead rhinos that we know and love and, and, and Kev and Rob have been absolutely front and centre of that for, for for many, many years. And, you know, we think absolute world of them. We absolutely do. Uh, and on behalf of everyone, Rob, uh, happy birthday for last week. It was your 50th last week. You're on a good day over 49. And, I know, I'm uh, feeling 50. Look at this. I, I need these specs on the two, £2.50, these. 
<laughs> and speaking of special occasions, Kev, uh, special occasion in, in your household today and you were out pounding the streets. Yeah, wedding anniversary today, 14 years. Congratulations. So, thank you very much. Yeah, well, so I can't believe that she's lived with me and not strangled me. <laughs> <laughs> she's here now, see? <laughs> Uh, no, it's been great. It's been great. Um, she thinks I'm crackers, uh, but I think, uh, you know, as soon as she understood the seven and seven, she's been brilliant. You know, it, it is like I'm back playing. She's done absolutely everything for me, and kids have been great, so supportive. Just like it is, it's really nice. And being back in the team has been brilliant. Um, just wanted to pick up on some at Rob. Rob said then about Dave Flannery. Um, he didn't do this for any publicity. He didn't do this for any special announcement. But but Dave sponsored Rob for, I don't know, 15, 19 years, Rob, would you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and the, the old family are, are pretty close with Rob. And it's probably Dave's fault. I'm going to use the word fault, but I'm going to change it to reason. It's probably Dave, the reason why we're doing 77, because Dave had a big chunk of money that he wanted to set this off with. And people don't know that, but, you know, one marathon weren't good enough for him because of the amount he was willing to tip in. But when someone's willing to tip in the sort of amount that has gone in, which is not part of the fund currently, um, it's gone straight into Rob's trust. It, it's it's mind-blowing that, you know, somebody was willing to, to come up with a, a chunk of cash like that for somebody who's absolutely very, very special, but um, didn't want any, he'll, he'll kill us for saying this, but didn't want uh, any publicity about it, didn't want any thanks. He just wanted to go about his business and get it done. And, we, you know, the people that you that you see, he's, he's front and centre on the vest at the minute. So underneath MND Association, absolutely ACS is their pride of place, right right on our on our guts, if you like. And then we've got a number of other sponsors on the, on the vest who have, contributed to to getting this in the in the right place and making sure it's run properly. Um, you know, Lee Beckett, MSC, um, Screen 4 did all our testing at the weekend. Um, there's two, Ramiro's Insurance Brokers, who, you know, Justin, another one, don't want any publicity, rang me as soon as this were announced. Bang, seven grand straight in the account, a grand for each day of the marathon. There's stuff going on like this that people are just... Um, really want to help and support Robin and the MND Association. So um, it's wonderful. I, did I mention Leeds Beckett Uni there as well? They've been great. They helped with the routes, they helped with some of the planning and the recovery. And uh, we've just been really, really fortunate. And because Rob is like he is, this is both Rob's on, on the call today, both Rob Burrow and, and Rob Oates, because they both are how they are. Our sponsors just can't get enough of this and, and just want to be a part of it. And want to be part of you know, helping people have, um, when, they, when they're faced with the challenges that this disease throws at them, they want them to have um, a better way of handling it and dealing with it and a better way of being comforted. And I think that's wonderful for our club. Yeah, yeah, Kev. Yeah. Fantastic saying. Sorry, totally right. Um, we asked yesterday for people to send in, send in their questions. Uh, so we've, we've got a few for you. We'll do some more tomorrow as well. So if you use the hashtag, uh, hashtag run Kevin run and put your question in there. We'll we'll pick some out. Uh, we'll rattle through them fairly quickly. Kev, uh, any chance of an autobiography? For me? Yeah. No, there's a the chance of Rob doing one though. Is yeah, it about? It. So um, keep an eye out for that one. Yeah, not for me. Uh, is getting fit for running seven marathons much different for your training in your playing career? Yeah, massively different. Massively, uh, there's there's not a chance I'd have been able to run a marathon while we we're playing. How much running have... would you have done in training during your playing days? Yeah, actual road running, we didn't do any. Did everything, I mean, it, it were all interval stuff. It was all short, sharp bursts, and and you got fit that way. So um, any, you never ran, you know, long, longer than hundred meters really, especially like those those later years. Um, the early years when both Rob and I started playing a lot of 400s and 800s in pre-season, but they, they all went, so it, it was very different. Um, a lot of interval stuff. Um, when I first finished playing, 
20, it'd be 20, 2016 when I, when I finished, um, I ran my first 10K that I'd ever been clocked, and that was in uh, our Leeds 10K for Leeds Rugby Foundation. I'd, I'd never done a distance before, so it was at that point then I started to run a bit more. Um, and the flip side is, um, am I fit enough now to still play? I reckon I probably am, but I reckon being hit again, I'd break into a thousand pieces, so... Um, <laughs> Getting old. I'm not as old as Rob. I'm not 50 yet, but um, I'm All getting right. old. All right. All right. <laughs> I, I remember at the start of the year, Kevin, we went to Spain for the the training camp, and we were we were short of a short of a hooker in the, in the training sessions. And you got the nod, and uh, you you didn't look out of place out there, mate. No, thank you, Phil. Very kind. He could easily play, Phil. He knows it. We all know it easily. Next one, uh, this is a very important question, especially this time of year as we head towards Christmas from uh, Laurie Lee on Twitter. Is Die Hard a Christmas film or not? I'll have to say which one. <laughs> which one? Well, one and two are both set at Christmas time. One, yes, one's then. in Nakatomi Towers and one's... Yes, uh, yeah. I'd say yes. Yeah, I, I, that, that, yeah. that would be my call in our house. Yeah, but I'd the, say yes. Yeah, but but the wife won't have it, and the kids can't allowed to watch it. So, <laughs> uh, uh, we mentioned the dab earlier on. Can Kev dab the whole marathon tomorrow? No, no, I don't. I don't think you'd be allowed back home if you did that. You might get a double dab though, but I reckon I'd lose all credibility at home. <laughs> uh, as I, I meant to explain to Jack, by me knocking some of your credibility, to just give the rest of the dads in the world a chance. Yeah. Got to take you down a peg or two, otherwise we're all just looking inferior. <laughs> Um, uh, how, how's your legs feeling, Kev? Uh, they're okay. I can tell a brand. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be in the ice bath a bit later on. Um, do a stint on the bike, just trying to turn them over. And today, because we're allowed again, um, I will be having a massage. So um... there's only one person in the world. Who do a bit of extra training? No, 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 that's, that's seven extra, it's seven marathons. Yeah, extra I'm training. Gonna do, I'm going to do a few light weights and do a bit on the bike. Yes, <laughs> it's a machine, isn't it? It's no, nuts. no. There's a reason to do the bike. It frees your uh, hip flexors. Yeah, whatever. So I bet you do some weights as well. Not today. Oh yeah. I might do it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, just just finally wrap, wrap, wrap it up with the, the Leeds City Council announced today um, in conjunction with um, the club and, and uh, the BBC and Leeds Beckett, the new mural that's been um, in the city centre. Um, I know, Kev, we're looking to, to reroute one of the runs at the weekend to, to go via it. That's great for the city to, to celebrate, Rob, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and right at the show as well, I, I just think um, to have something like that um is really fitting he's a superstar and um not only for his playing career but the last 11 months um i was first the challenge is is first uh, um yeah they should be everywhere fantastic stuff well we wish you all the best for marathon number three tomorrow kev we'll catch Thank up you. with you after that thanks uh, jonathan john jen and rob uh, for being on the call and as always our uh, our inspiration rob watching from home uh, great to have you on board, Rob, and I hope we do you proud. Love you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you.